Let's talk about making your game run at 60 frames per second. 60 frames per second seems to be that feature that for a lot of genres is always one generation in the future, where the games are chosen to run at 30 frames per second this generation, but there's this kind of implicit promise that next generation will do 60 frames per sure, and the next generation comes around and it doesn't ever quite happen. What's going on? As we talk about this, the easiest way to talk about this is to flip things on its head. And rather than talking about frame rate is to talk about frame time. So if you want to figure out how much time you have for each frame, it's pretty easy. You just take a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, divide by the number of frames per second you want, and you get the number of milliseconds you have per frame to work with. So 30 frames per second gives you 33 and a third milliseconds per frame. 60 frames per second, half that. 16 and two thirds milliseconds per frame or usually as we talk about it, we'll just use 16 milliseconds. There's not very much time. This is ultimately the reason why it's such a hard thing to do for a lot of genres because you've got a lot going on and you need to spend this time for everything you need to do. To move from 30 frames a second to 60 frames per second, you pretty much need to double the amount of work that you're doing because most of the calculations you're doing for animation, for graphic updates, for gameplay responsiveness, for input, aren't really any cheaper to do for a 16 millisecond time step than they are for a 33 millisecond time step. So even though less has happened, the calculations required to figure all that out is basically the same. So to go from 30 frames a second to 60 frames a second, you're basically almost entirely across the board, you're doubling your work. There's a couple of exceptions to that. You can, with some, not even very clever, but slightly clever coding, run things like decision-making for your AI and uh, potentially rendering on your UI, make those things run at a lower frame rate. You don't really need the AI to be deciding what it's doing 60 times a second. You probably don't even need to do, have it happen 30 times a second. In Baldur's Gate 1, it happens once a second. So you can detach certain things from your frame rate and reduce that doubling of work to some degree. But on the flip side, on the bad side of that, there are some things you kind of can't really make run any faster. Input and output to the various peripherals you have, the hard drives and uh, and solid state drives, those are pretty much at a fixed speed. As hardware gets better, those are getting faster. But if you want to take a game and you're taking eight milliseconds every frame to do some sort of read off of your storage mediums, well, at 30 frames a second, that's about a quarter of the amount of time you have. At 60 frames a second, it's half. So that's not really practical. You have to change the way you think. So the reality is as to why RPGs and other games sort of flirt with 60 but never quite get there is that it's actually incredibly difficult to do. You have a very limited time. You need to structure everything around this goal. And often it's seen as not really being worth it. If you're making a game that's very much about responsiveness, then 60 frames per second is almost table stakes. It's almost a requirement to have. But if you're making a game which is a little bit slower of pace, a little bit more about thinking and looking, it might be worthwhile to spend that time rather than on making your frame rate faster, making your visual fidelity higher, or making there be a few more creatures in the scene. This is a decision that is being made constantly. But right now, we're in an interesting situation where pretty much most games are being made with a couple of different targets of hardware on the consoles. Maybe you're making a version that runs on the Switch, but you're also making a version that runs on the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. Well, there's differences between all three of those. And this means that at the upper end, you might have an opportunity to make a choice. So the choice that's often being made at the very highest hardware that's available is, 
do you run the game at 4K or maybe even 8K, or do you run at 60 frames per second as opposed to 30? Those aren't directly in competition with each other, but they kind of are. So to move from a 1080p game, a standard HD game to a 4K, you are impacting two things primarily. The amount of rendering work you're doing, you're quadrupling the number of pixels that you're drawing. And you're also putting extra weight on the fidelity of the underlying assets. You better make sure your textures are created at higher resolutions if you're going to be showing them at higher resolutions. But for the most part, with increasing your frame rate, the other things are not really affected. Your AI is not getting any more expensive. Your animation is not getting any more expensive. A lot of things kind of stay fixed. And a lot of the stuff that you do to move up to 4K can be done entirely on the graphics hardware. So often, if your underlying assets are high enough fidelity, you can get 4K simply by just throwing more hardware at the problem. You might have to do some extra work for your UIs because you probably don't want your UIs to get tiny and unreadable. But other than that, from a playability perspective, you just go from this to this and you quadruple your number of pixels and it's almost free. Conversely, going from 30 to 60 isn't free. There's a lot of other things that you need to do and it's hitting everything. It's got to draw the pixels twice as fast, which is mostly on your graphic hardware, but it's also got to run the animation twice as fast. It's got to do physics twice as fast. It's got to do everything twice as fast, which is mostly going to hit your CPU, your primary processor. But moving from 30 to 60 frames per second doesn't really hit your assets very much. Your animation will be fine, doesn't require higher textures, doesn't probably require any more memory unless you're having to work around limitations of your hard drive. 1080p to 4K requires more memory to store your bigger textures, a bigger disk probably to store your bigger textures and higher fidelity assets, but it lives mostly in GPU land. 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second hits your GPU and your CPU, probably doesn't require much more memory, if any at all, but introduces different issues in terms of input and output. So all of this is a, is a very complicated series of decisions you might find yourself having to make. So what do I think? 60 frames per second, 4K. For me, I would say this. Games are an interactive medium and a medium of motion. So 60 frames per second improves your interactivity in a way that is immediately perceptible, but hard to define. HD to 4K, it is noticeable, but the average person will get used to a 1080 game very quickly, and it's just a minor incremental improvement. That improvement in reactivity that you can get from a higher frame rate is so much greater that for me, if I had to choose, I would choose 60 frames per second over 4K every single time. With higher resolutions, you can kind of stop along the way if you want. If you want to do your game at 2K, the game will look a little bit better. If you want to do something in between, it'll look a little bit better. If you have a highly variable frame rate that's pulsing up and down, you see this in some Bioware games, that's really noticeable and it's really bad. A game that's oscillating between 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second feels a lot worse than a game that's locked at 30 frames per second. So if you're gonna go for 60, you can only stop a few places along the way. You might be able to get away with 45 frames per second if you're pretty rock solid, but it needs to be related to your refresh rate of your game and you need to be not oscillating all over the place because if you're oscillating all over the place, people are gonna notice that change and it's gonna feel really bad. So high resolution is something that you get without a lot of risk. Higher frame rate, you better be confident in your ability to pull it off or you might end up spending a lot of time on something and not really getting anything for the work. Of course, all of this is also sort of predicated on this false dichotomy that the choice is between 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. A lot of games actually let the game run at whatever frame rate it is capable of doing and is, are completely unattached from any sort of fixed frame rate. This 
potentially can introduce things like tearing as the picture is updating in the middle of being rendered. You can lock to the refresh rate of monitor to get around that. I mean, some, some modern monitors have 240 hertz refresh rate, so you could run at a frame locked 240 and have no tearing whatsoever. One of the consequences of having a completely unlocked frame rate where there is no lock, nothing is locked anywhere, is it can actually introduce instabilities in some of the systems that might be mathematically unstable because floating point math is just inherently unstable. And what might be entirely deterministic at 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second becomes slightly non-deterministic at 70 frames per second or 45 frames per second. So one reason why you see games lock their frame rate to 30 or 60 is often some sort of non-determinism that they're, they never really managed to resolve. More and more, you're not seeing that as much. You're seeing games that are kind of letting themselves run at whatever they're capable of on PC hardware and specifically. Typically on consoles because you know what you got, yet you dial it into one of the rational multiples of 30 and you and you let that be what you're going to do. So on consoles, you typically see 30 or 60 and nothing else. On PCs, often you see something that is completely untethered and can run at whatever it wants. Uh, but you sometimes see games that are 30 or 60 or, or 120 and just those three are, are possible based upon what hardware is available. But it depends on the underlying gameplay systems and engine in terms of if that's a problem or not. Now I said that reactivity is a big part of the reason to do 60 frames per second. So something that you can do is you can get that reactivity through a few different clever hacks. In Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2, the cursor, the actual movement of the cursor is actually updated separately from the frame rate of the game. So it's always updating, I believe it's 60 frames per second actually, even though the game often on, on lower end hardware is running maybe even at 20 frames per second. So the game feels like it's listening to you, even though maybe the frame rate's running really badly. Same things, you might be able to update your, your gameplay responsiveness multiple times per frame to allow the game to seem like it's actually running faster than it is. It's a bit of a hack and maybe a black hole of potential work. And as you start to, to un, unwrap your gameplay loop, to look for bits that you can update multiple times per frame, you're definitely introducing a lot more complexity and in a lot more places where bugs can sneak in. But it's something to think about where you might be able to get gameplay loop and your AI loop running at 60 frames per second, but then let everything else run at 25 or 30 frames per second and get a game that feels almost like a 60 frame per second game without having to run everything twice as fast. Special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, we have a Discord server and we can talk about things over there. There's a link down in the description for people that are interested in joining. We also have Super Thanks turned on now, so if you'd like to support the channel that way, there's a little heart with a dollar sign in it where you can give the channel some money. It would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, what do you think? Do you demand a game run at 60 frames per second? Do you like games that let, let themselves run at whatever the hardware is capable of? I think locked frame rates is a conversation maybe for a different video. Let me know down in the comments. We can have a conversation about that as well. I will see you again soon. Thank you.